you don't have bad footage, you just need to learn how to max out your footage. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn shots like this to shots like this in Adobe After Effects. My name is Kevin and I run a production company called Moonboy Studios. Over the last 10 years, I've pretty much bootstrapped every shoot to date, but with the things that I've learned, we've been able to work with brands like Nike, Adidas, Hypebeast, Puma, and a bunch more. So if you want more tutorials like this, make sure you sub to the channel. We have a link in the description to our school academy, where we're pretty much gonna be sharing everything we've learned over the last 10 or so years, long time. So literally no gatekeeping, we're gonna be sharing everything we've learned. So yeah, with that, let's get into this tutorial. So let's get into the first part. Before I do that, I'm going to add a curves adjustment first and just brighten it up a little bit and crush the blacks just a touch and then pre-comp it. So what this is doing is it gives my, it gives warp stabilizer a bit more clarity on where the points are. So I'm going to right click and hit warp stabilizer. So now that the warp stabilizer is done, the next thing we want to do is make sure that DC is center of the frame. So I'm going to hit the rectangle tool and draw a little rectangle like this. Next thing we want to go windows. Uh, window align and we're going to align this to the center so now we have i'm going to lock this off so we don't accidentally move it now we have a center line and we know where the center point should be so i'm just going to move the shot over at a keyframe go to the end and yeah it actually looks pretty good so he's in the center for the whole time like in the middle he, he kind of moves off but that's not too bad so i'm pretty happy with that so we can delete this center line here i'm going to pre-comp this shot and i'm going to go into the very base layer and I'm going to adjust this curves adjustment a little bit. Okay. I think something like this would be good. So the idea is to give our rotoscope enough data to do a nice clean roto. I don't think it's going to be super clean because this is all a bit muddy here. So if if I turn off the curves adjustment, you can see that this there's no way this would do a clean roto. But with this, we have a bit better luck. So we'll go back to the top. I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'll turn off the bottom one because that's going to be our base plate or our background layer and i'm going to just draw a roto around dc Alrighty, cool so that's decent i'm just going to clean it up a little bit okay so now that the roto is done uh the next thing that we want to do and i'll just show you quickly what it's looking like see how it's really jittery and it probably wouldn't be defined as a very good roto for, for our case here this is actually going to be fine before we do anything else we have to hit freeze okay cool so the roto has finished freezing so we're going to duplicate this and I'm going to add, I'm going to draw an oval. Okay, and we'll hit M and we're gonna move it forward and just make sure that it stays where it needs to. And I'm gonna hit F and add a bit of a feather. So this feather can probably get more and more feathered as we go. So we're gonna start off with maybe 70 feather and then towards the end, we're gonna increase it quite a fair bit to about there, I would say. We're just gonna add a mask around our talent. Go over to the top layer here and I'm gonna hit uh, for this feather, I'm gonna make it 10 and I'm gonna shrink, I'm gonna shift the edge of this roto by negative 50 and I'm gonna go key cleaner and I'm gonna drag this effect over the top and back to five. Okay, I think that's not too bad. Right click down here and create a new solid. And as for the color of the solid, we're going to pick something probably and let's drag that underneath these two, but above that one. And as you can see, we've our friend in a black room. So what we're going to do is we're going to go brightness and contrast. We're going to put it on this layer here and add keyframe. And we're going to go over to about here where we can distinctly see the difference in brightness. And we're going to bring the brightness down to about there. And honestly, I reckon we add like one bunch of contrast we'll see that it's gotten a lot better what we'll do is we'll go all the way to the base layer and turn on this curves adjustment so right click and we'll go track camera and so i'm going to select this one this one this one and let's go this one uh, and then right click and create solid and camera and that we're working with and i have a concrete texture here that i'm going to drag in and it looks like this and what i'll do is I'll stretch it out, cover this whole frame, and I'll right click and recompose this guy. Cool, and I'm gonna drag this under the, the dark solid, and we're gonna make that concrete texture a 3D, a 3D layer. And then I'm gonna swivel this guy down like this. Okay, and I'm gonna copy the X, Y, and Z positions of all of this onto my concrete layer. 
and I'm going to size this up Oops. and I'm holding shift just to keep the aspect ratio same and as you can see it's tracked pretty nicely to the shot so I'm going to play this and it's tracked pretty nicely so the next thing we want to do is we're going to go inside this layer and we're going to create a circle and we'll go about here and I'm just holding shift just to keep this aspect ratio the same I'm going to hit F now and I'm going to feather it out maybe that much and I can already tell that I'm probably going to need to do this all right and I'm going to go out okay so this is what we're looking like pretty good I'll be honest all right I'm going to delete this solid don't need that anymore this is what we're going to do we're going to hit mask and we're going to drag this out here and we're going to make this floor mask as big as we possibly can I know what we need to do we need to find a part of this texture that will match up with this so we're going to go probably going to move this along here and then move this mask up here i think this might end up working a bit better mm -hmm. play with this and next thing i'm going to do is going to pre-comp this floor layer pre-compose next thing let's make this a little bit smaller okay so now i'm just going to tweak this a little bit more i still feel like it's a bit more contrasty Okay, that's looking better. All right, instead of playing with the curves, I'm gonna add a hue and saturation, and I'm gonna add the lightness up, boost it, this down, get some of that deep uh, at the end of the shot. So I'm gonna go over here and just add a keyframe to both my curves and my hue and saturation, and I'm gonna go over to where I start seeing it um, backed up. Probably safe to go around here, and I'm going to, uh, let's play with this a little bit and see if it gets any better. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is remove the jitter from the feet as much as I can. So I'm going to duplicate the very base layer and drag it maybe somewhere around here. Okay, cool. And I'm going to draw an ellipse and create this mask. Okay, and I'm going to feather it out maybe that much. So what this does is it just brings that back. One final thing, I'm going to duplicate this floor mask that we just did for the feet. And I'm going to make it a lot wider there and we'll go luma luma key and we're just going to key out the brightest part we get something like that and then we're just going to feather it out so and then drop it in like that. hopefully that looks decent and that's going to bring back that shadow just a bit more here and that's pretty much almost done i'm going to pre-comp it all and i'm going to just put a lot over the top just to see what it would look like created okay boom so that's with the lut on it i prefer it to be a bit colder so too bright here so what i'm going to do is duplicate this create a mask around here and just darken that side the curves a bit of a curves adjustment on there and just bring this guy down just a little bit and then feather it out just going to adjust it as we go make sure that mask is in the right place looks pretty good and i'm going to turn my lumetri back on just gonna play with this so that it looks like how we want it to so that's a bit better so this is what we're working with. Obviously, you could tweak this for another four or five hours, but um, I just wanted to give you guys a run through. Honestly, it's really important because if you know these things, you can you can use these techniques on pretty much any shoot and any type of footage and clean it up. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll catch you guys next time.